In the early 1970s, many women are angry. They will no longer be patronized or put off. I have the same brain uh, capacity as you have. Just because I have to, by nature, have the child, doesn't mean that that makes me a good person to be in the home with that child. I will not stay in the home just because a man says that I should. Indian woman has been the workhorse, the doormat, and the baby machine. A royal commission on the status of women channels that anger. Journalist Doris Anderson notes the commission is a wake-up call for a lot of people. People thought it was ridiculous. A royal commission on women? What's the matter? Women are fine. The papers reported on it as a joke, but people quickly began to realize that this wasn't a joke at all. Women of Canada answer with fire the blood of their sisters. Thousands of women become activists. The decriminalization of abortion soon becomes one of their main issues. We will go ahead from here and we will speak for the women of Canada and we will do further actions until each woman has her right to control her own life. Therapeutic abortions are legal, but very few are performed. A woman has to make her case to a board of doctors and the doctors are the ones who decide. Pressure to change this is growing. Marcy Cohen is a student at Simon Fraser University in British Columbia. Women still had to go to a psychiatrist and say, I'm psychologically unstable, and so you have to give me an abortion. A Montreal doctor, Henry Morgenthaler, publicly calls for abortion on demand. We believe that any woman should have the right to ask for a termination of pregnancy within the first three months of pregnancy. He openly begins to practice illegal abortions at his clinic in East End, Montreal. There, he develops a safe abortion procedure. Vancouver Women's Caucus is leaving today on this abortion cavalcade and is joining with women all across Canada in a nationwide struggle. In the spring of 1970, Marcy Cohen and a group of women set off for Ottawa to demand the right to abortion on demand. We were 14, 15 women. There was a yellow Pontiac convertible, a Volkswagen bus with a coffin strapped to the top. Their trek receives nationwide media coverage and they gather support everywhere they go. It was incredible. Across the country, waitresses in restaurants, for instance, would open up to us and tell us stories about what they've gone through. We picked up some women along the way from Saskatoon and Winnipeg. Some women came from Toronto and Montreal. So we had 500 to 1,000 women with us in Ottawa. They have asked for a meeting with Prime Minister Trudeau, but have received no reply. So they decide to show up at his residence. We all started a spontaneous march on Sussex Drive. There were four policemen there, but no big fences or anything. We rang the doorbell. We put the coffin down in front of his door. Nothing happens. Three years later, Henry Morgenthaler directly challenges the government, the police, and the courts. From 1968, I have performed 5,000 abortions in my clinic in Montreal in defiance of the abortion law, which I consider to be unjust, unfair, restrictive.
That galvanizes the large movement of people against abortions. We're here for many days and we're going to stay here as long as we can to try and reduce the number of abortions, to try and put Dr. Morgenthaler out of business and, if possible, uh, to have him in jail. The authorities decide to act. Morgenthaler is arrested. Je suis prêt à laisser ma peau même pour cette lutte. Parce que je trouve que c'est une lutte pour la justice, pour la dignité des femmes, pour la protection de la santé des femmes. The Morgenthaler case will drag on for 10 years. Even though he testifies he performed abortions, juries will acquit him three times. In the next years, women will broaden their fight to include paid maternity leave, daycare, and salaries equal to those of male colleagues.